Cy Lynch and Anthony Macri in row one. Corey Day and Tyler Courtney in row number two. Brent Marks and James McFadden in row three. Brad Sweet and Jacob Allen in row number four. And row five, got Emerson Axum and Danny Sams the third. Row six, AJ Flick and Brian Brown. Row seven, Chris Windham and Spencer Based in row eight, Hunter Schoenberg and Tanner Thorson. Row nine, Parker Price Miller and Cody Bova. Row 10, Ryan Smith and Brenham Crouch. And then from the B main, Logan Wagner, Rico Abreu, Corey Eliason, and Justin Peck. Lernerville Speedway, we got them racked. We got them stacked. Let's go racing off at turn number four. We are green. Rumbling into turn number one. We're three wide already for the second position. Give it to Anthony Macri as Cy Lynch shows the way down the back straightaway. Cy Lynch with the lead as Corey Day made a move to the inside of Tyler Courtney. Day wheels up off the corner. Leading lap one is Cy Lynch. Anthony Macri quickly to the inside. Looking for the race lead. Tries to run the bottom, but Lynch too good around the outside. Cy Lynch continues to show the way. Anthony Macri running in second. Third spot is now Tyler Courtney. Corey Day runs in fourth, and then James McFadden is into the top five. McFadden so close to a win here the last time at the Silver Cup. Got into it with Tyler Courtney with a couple laps to go off at of turn four. McFadden going to try and make his way forward. Here comes Tyler Courtney. He was in that wreck as well with McFadden. He's going to have the second spot off at turn number four. Tyler Courtney going at it with Anthony Macri. Back into turn number one. Courtney going to try and run the bottom of Macri. Too good around the outside. He'll maintain the second position. Lap traffic already about to become a factor for Cy Lynch. He's almost on the same straightaway as the tail end of the field. Race for second down the front straightaway. Macri continues to have it at the start finish line. Second and third look to be closing in on your race leaders. They once again go side by side and sort of that down into turn number three. Here comes Tyler Courtney, a huge Hail Mary slider. He's got the second spot back away. Tyler Courtney now up into second. Macri slips to third. Fourth is still Corey Day and fifth is James McFadden. Cy Lynch with an eight or so car length lead over your rate or the second place car of Tyler Courtney. That time by just under a second was the advantage for the driver from Apollo, Pennsylvania. He's got Logan Wagner, Ryan Smith, Cody Boba, and a bunch of others right in front of him. He's going to catch him here in the next two laps. Race for third off of turn number four. Corey Day's got the third spot. Corey Day shoves the 39M car of Anthony Macri out of the way off of turn four, and Corey Day's up to third. Corey Day, can he maintain that position? Macri drew back to the left rear but couldn't make the pass as Cy Lynch gets by his first lap car, that being Logan Wagner. So now a lap car between your race leader and the second place machine. Lynch, even passing that lap car, did extend the race lead just a little bit to 1.1 seconds. But the traffic is getting thick. It is getting very thick at the tail end of the field. Cars two and three wide up the road from your race leader. Here comes Tyler Courtney. Here comes Corey Day. The top three starting to catch back up to each other. One car over the cushion right in front of your race leader is Rico Avery. He keeps on going. Race for second down the front straightaway. Now Corey Day switches the lineup, goes to the top, hammers the cushion, gets a big run down the back straightaway. Going to look to the inside of Tyler Courtney down the back straightaway. Race for second into turn three. Day gets stuck behind Logan Wagner. And Tyler Courtney's still going to have second at the line. Tyler Courtney maintains the second spot, but he saw Corey Day right there in turns number three and four. Now, all of a sudden, Tyler Courtney takes the lead down the back straightaway. Sunshine got by. Corey Day goes to second. An issue for Lynch there off of turn two. And now, they're side by side for the race lead off of turn four. Oh, boy. This is getting good at the front of the field at Lernerville. Tyler Courtney over the inside berm. Corey Day to the outside. Takes the lead down the back straightaway. T Corey Day now to the race lead. Tyler Courtney back to the inside. He's stuck behind Cody Boba. But don't worry. The 14, he's still got plenty of cars to deal with up the road. The six of Ryan Smith, the 24 of Abreu, the eight of Eliason. This one far from over for the 18-year-old. Cy Lynch has slipped back to the third spot. Macri runs in fourth and fifth, still belongs to the 83 car of James McFadden. Behind McFadden, a side-by-side -side battle down into turn number one between the 19 of Brett Marks, the 49 of Brad Sweet, as Sweet, or actually Marks, still maintains that position for now. Corey Day up around the outside of the racetrack, now trying to get by the Silver Cup winner, that being Rico Abreu. Tyler Courtney going to try and work to the middle as Corey Day diamonds it off the corner, and he pulls away slightly from the driver out of Indianapolis, Indiana. Goes to the top in three and four. That cushion getting built up pretty steep off of turn number four, but Corey Day running it to perfection. Just past the halfway mark here on night one of the Commonwealth Clash. And we have got a duel for the ages at the front of the field. Corey Day now to the bottom in three and four. Slips it up off the bottom. Tyler Courtney nearly lost the car. Gets into it with Cody Bova. Close call there.
there for Sunshine. Tyler Courtney continues in that second spot, but he nearly lost the car and went around off of turn four. Now he's under fire. The 39M car of Anthony Macri has gotten by the 42 of Cy Lynch. Move Macri up to third and looking to track down Tyler Courtney for second. Macri unable to get by the number 20B of Cody Bova. The 42 of Cy Lynch works back to the inside as Brad Sweet nearly got hit by the left rear tire of James McFadden off of turn two. Cy Lynch back into the third spot. He'll get by two cars in one corner. One of them was a lap car of Cody Bova. Lynch back to third. Cy Lynch back into the third position the last time by. Your race leaders are running identical lap times at 15.5 for both of them. But Corey Day's lead is almost two seconds over the 7BC of Tyler Courtney. 10 laps to go for Corey Day. So close to a win here during the Silver Cup. Came up one spot short. Gets cut off on turn number two right there from the eight of Corey Eliason. Most cars around the inside of the speedway. Meanwhile, the 14 car works the outside. Now ducks low into turn one. Tries to slide in front of the eight of Elias, and he will do so off at turn number two. Corey back to the inside, regains his lap from the other Corey. Coming around to eight laps to go this time by as Day can't make the pass on the slower car. Cy Lynch's car coming back to life as he almost got by Tyler Courtney in turn four. Might do it this time off of turn two. Can't do it there. Sunshine maintains second. Corey Day's lead now just 1.4 seconds, so a half second taken out of the lead by Tyler Courtney. Cy Lynch to the inside. Lynch did not have the second spot at the line. Now he has it in turn one. Cy Lynch with the rally cap on. He is trying to get by and get up to the race lead once again here late in this race. Corey Day coming up on the eight-time track champion of A.J. Flick. Corey's lead that time by was 1.6 seconds. Cy Lynch, very good through the middle of the racetrack in one and two. It does appear that he's closing in, but there is a car. Now make it two cars between himself and the 14 of day. 1.6 seconds that time with five laps to go. Corey Day under fire again as A.J. Flick looks back to the inside and turns three and four. Cy Lynch still cannot get by the six of Ryan Smith. James McFadden still runs in the fifth spot. Then Brent Marks, Brad Sweet, Jacob Allen, Spencer Baston, Tanner Thorson's into the top ten now, getting by Emerson Axum that time by. Corey Day now closing in on the one of Brenham Crouch. Crouch currently runs in the 19th position. Day cannot make the pass on him with three lap cars between himself and the second place car as Day now makes his way around the outside and puts him a lap down. Next time, that will be the white flag. One to go for Corey Day. Corey Day back straight away. Now looking at Danny Sams. Has to go to the outside and turns three and four. Absolutely ripping the literal lip around Lernerville Speedway here tonight. White flag, one to go. Corey Day down the back straight away with a huge lead over Cy Lynch. Three and four for the final time. Win number seven on the year comes at Lernerville. Corey Day gets the win on night one of the Commonwealth Clash. Second at the line is gonna go to Cy Lynch, just barely over Tyler Courtney, Anthony Macri, and James McFadden in the top five. the checkered flag at 8.59 p.m. Eastern time, a non-stop 30 lapper, and Corey Day is your winner. Cy Lynch ends up in second. Third goes to Tyler Courtney, fourth to Anthony Macri, and fifth goes to James McFadden. Sixth to Brent Marks, seventh to Brad Sweet, eighth to Jacob Allen, ninth to Spencer Baston, and tenth goes to Tanner Thorson after starting in the 16th spot. Behind him, Emerson Axum, Chris Windham, Hunter Schoenberg, Parker Price Miller, Rico Abreu, Brian Brown, Danny Sams, Justin Peck, Corey Lyson, and Brenham Crouch. Rounding out the field is Ryan Smith, A.J. Flick, Cody Boba, and Logan Wagner. He's already got the helmet off and the hat on. Climbing out of the Jason Myers Racing number 14. Corey Day with the fireworks going off. He'll get the Hoosier tire neckband. He'll get the Sunoco race fuels checkered flag. He's headed up top, race fans. How about it? Corey Day! Officially his eighth win on the year, but seventh one in the record books for him. The prelim night at the Gold Cup, not counting towards that, but his seventh 
full feature win for Corey here this year with Highland Racing. It's been a fantastic season for him, and he'll kick off a weekend at the Lernerville Speedway with a victory, Tony. Night number one of the Commonwealth Clash goes to Corey Day. It's your eighth win of the year with high limits, seventh full-time one because the prelim nights don't, uh, don't really count, but a clean and green 30-lap feature with pretty torrid pace. What was it like behind the steering wheel that's driven to save lives machine? Man, I, uh, I did not know where they were at or where to be. Um, you know, I kind of got to those lap cars there, and uh, they were three wide there for a second, and I got to Rico, and then he started driving away from me on the bottom, and I moved down, and my car wasn't good down there, so I had to move back up, and, um, you know, I thought I saw Sunshine's nose about 25 different times, and it uh, must have just been a lap car, but, um, yeah, the track just cleaned off there, and, um, you know, we got really, really free, and I just started uh, getting real stood up and couldn't make much speed, so, um, you know, glad... Glad it, you know, cleaned off and built a curb, and I was able to kind of go rely on that. And, um, yeah, good to get another one for sure. You came here for the first time back in July for the Don Martin Memorial Silver Cup. You went second to second that night, but then you get to come back here. And that's kind of been the theme a lot this season, getting to go back to tracks for the second time. Did you feel much better? Did you feel any more confidence knowing how well you ran here in July? Oh, I definitely did feel better. You know, I knew um, we weren't too great on our race car last time. Rico beat us with no left rear shock there. Um, so, uh, yeah, we had some work to do this time. But um, like you said, it's great to come back to track for the second time and uh, have a notebook and know what you could have done better. And um, we did it better there in that feature. So as a high roller, a full-time high limit racer in 2024, any time a high roller wins, you get to send $1,000 of an angel donor's money we didn't get to do this, mostly because I forgot back at Gold Cup, 70 in Chico. So where are you sending our angel donors $1,000 tonight? Uh, driven to save lives. You know, they support me and uh, my race team and, you know, came on board for, for our big year this year. So uh, if I got a chance to get back to them, I'm going to do that. So I uh, got to thank, you know, Driven to Save Lives, Sander Engineering, Myers Instructors, Four Seas Construction, uh, FK Rodden's Factory Kane, Paul Kissler, KPC Chassis, uh, All-Star Performance, Autry Plumbing, um, System One, just a long list of people that are on this thing that believe in, in me and my guys and, uh, you know, our whole team to, to help us go do what we want to do. Okay, and finally, the real question I need to ask is, during the redraw wheel spin, the Butler Bilt question was, who would you like to go head-to-head -head against? You pretty confidently said Ronnie Day, your father. So now, after your tying with Brad Sweet's seventh feature win and Rico, you joined those guys with seven wins this season. Ronnie, I mean, do you think he's nervous now? He's got to be nervous. Got to be. I, you know, like I said, I think two laps might be a good race, um, but he definitely couldn't have ran with me for 30 there. Oh, Corey Day, he's got the confidence because he's got the win number seven here in 2024. Make some noise for your winner, Corey Day. And Tony with that win and the overall year with that prelim night, he would be the winningest driver on the season. But he is now tied, as you mentioned there, with Brad Sweet and Rico Abreu. So those drivers with seven wins apiece between the 49, the 24, and the 14. So good stuff there. And next up, Cy Lynch. He got going late in the race, Tony, and he finishes up in the second spot. Yeah, what a uh, kind of roller coaster. Maybe seesaw is the better word for the feature that Cy Lynch had here tonight. Started on the pole position inside of the front row. And uh, Cy, we're going to get over and check in with him. He's debriefing with Jake Argo and the 7BC guys. Cy, let's get over here in front of your race car and show it off because this thing was moving. You were, uh, you were up, you were down. You had like a five-lap run from lap eight to 13 or 14 where you were really off the mark. And then you got back. You started clicking off really fast laps. What happens in the middle part of that race? And what kind of forced you to have to battle back? Well, I mean, these guys are the best in the world for a reason. So you just can't make mistakes. You have to be on kill every lap. And, um, you know, a few laps there, I made mistakes. And getting the lap traffic, you know, that was one of those deals where uh, <laughs> if I zigged, they zagged, and I just couldn't predict it right. So uh, that's on me. But the car was really good. I can't thank my guys enough. Mesitis Motorsports, Ducati of Pittsburgh, uh, Mav Motorsports, Mike Kleck. You know, everyone that makes this possible, it's just Mountain Mechanical, All-American, and uh, you know, we still are an underdog team, and we've been fighting all year to, uh, to race with the best, and I, uh, I think it shows that uh, it's improving our team. I think it was I-70, no, Lucas Oil, night number one. You had a really strong car. You came out of there with a top five finish. How validating is this to know that you went up against, in your words, the best in the world, the high rollers with Kubota Island Racing. You stayed up front, you battled back, and you get out of here with a second place finish. Does that validate you as a driver? I hope so. I mean, you know, I'm probably my hardest critic and, you know, my guys and I run a tight knit operation and, uh, you know, I just got to give up to the fans, you know, being here in the home track, you know, I really, uh, 
for the Silver Cup here, I really wanted to put on a good show. I thought we were top three car that night, and uh, to come back home and, and uh, finish second and have a chance to win, you know, means a lot. That is Cy Lynch. He's been racing with us a ton here in 2024 with Kubota Island Racing. Zane Reese, he's an ambivert. We talked about that already, though, after the heat race. And then Sunshine, Tyler Courtney, you're going to chop it up a little bit more with Cy Lynch later. But kind of the same thing for you, a bit of an accordion effect seesaw kind of a race. You had a big moment coming off turn number four over here, clean and green. How crazy is it when those races get strung out like that? Yeah, it's, it's pretty hectic in that the track changed you know, quite a bit there during the feature. And yeah, we were pretty good early, so I, I, I knew that kind of event we might fade a little bit late, but uh, to run third, I about spun out and you gave everything away that we worked hard for tonight, but uh, saved it and, uh, you know, come third after our, our last few weeks here is damn near like a win for us. So just, uh, you know, can't thank uh, Ron, Bobby, and Jake enough for, for this, uh, for the last few weeks. I know it's, it's trying, especially going up and down the road and tearing stuff up and just uh, a lot of stuff out of our control at the same time. But uh, they've kept their heads on straight and you know, the same as me to, to, you know, keep the big picture in mind and uh, just keep chugging along. And thanks to Nasa Energy Drink, LA's Custom Trailers, Fire Motorsports. And uh, we'll uh, this puts us in a good spot for tomorrow and uh, try and go get 50 grand and uh, forget about the last few weeks. That's Tyler Courtney. He comes home in the third position here tonight uh, after 30 laps of clean green racing.